The early game up and down. The mid game has been the big question mark. Yeah, and we say the early game's been up and down. It's been up one and a half times. Uh, those are the times I remember, Jack. Of the eight games, and that really has been their biggest weakness. And we talk about whether or not they can have the right mentality because this is a team that really felt like they imploded last year in the world's group stage finishing one and five and after their start you may have thought that that could have happened again but i feel like this g2 team is much stronger mentally than they used to be in obviously it's incredibly difficult to start off your day with sk telecom team one but they got to do their best to keep level head and i think they can do it well i think so as well but here's champs like between these two sides lots of jungle bands already little blanc the starter for sk tt1 but ivan leeson and graves all taken out as well Heavy jungle focus, and this is interesting. We've seen uh, a little bit of a decrease, actually, in the Lulu Karma bands, and people are more okay with just trading them away. So heavy jungle bands right here. Very surprised to see the Fizz, the final ban on blue side. Fizz jumped really in priority as a flex pick yesterday. Three early rotation Fizzes, flexing to mid against Syndra, the top lane matchups we know all about. All of them victories. It's been a very popular pick this tournament. And now it makes me wonder about the, if the Twitch will be banned, it won't. And Twitch has been consistently banned against SKT because you could try banning all the shielding supports, but then there's still Tom Kench, and SKT will blind pick Twitch very often. Yeah, with Lulu and Karma up, that's still a possibility. They can pick the Lulu with the Karma, or they can even put Lulu mid lane and Nami bottom lane. So a very real flex for SKT. That being said, all of those jungle bans, uh, I agree with the Fizz ban in this instance because I think G2 may have even picked it right here, and it's not something you necessarily want to first pick with all the shielders still available. Well, we'll see what happens here. Lulu, first pick for SKT, that's kind of obvious. Syndra was G2's last ban, so taking that one away is kind of interesting. We're expecting Karma, but the likes of Cannon, the likes of Rumble were left open. He'll actually first pick Orianna, though. Seeing it this early in the draft is surprising. SK Telecom was not playing Orianna with a lot of their Twitch-centric hyper-carry drafts. Anyway, obviously a very famous pick for Faker, but they showed a lot of top laners before locking in the Orianna. It's a perks comfort pick, and it could certainly still be double shielding from G2. Yeah, and if they end up locking in this Karma in the next four or five seconds, it does give them most likely two pushing lanes, but they opt not to leave the door open for SKT to take it here. And it feels like insanity because the one team you don't want to leave up, double support, Karma and Lulu flex fits to, is SK Telecom because Bang is proven on the Twitch. He even has played the Cogmore so far this tournament. So we were talking about them and we're like, okay, maybe against TSM you can leave up Lulu and Karma. But against this team in particular, it seems like a gambit too far. Yeah, and it feels a little bit like madness. They blind pick both solo laners as a red side team against SKT who have some of the deepest solo lane champion pools guaranteed they're walking into mostly two counter picks they banned away the one they're most fearful of in the syndra but still what's faker gonna have ready and look let's give them the benefit of the doubt the only reason you blind pick in the first round both your champions is because you feel like you have a practice strategy yep. that can go against the field kennen wins basically every top lane matchup oriana usually may not have pressure but can get through lanes but it seems like a huge gambit if we're giving them the benefit of the doubt especially looking at the skt tsm game yesterday where huni destroyed haunter's kennen top lane Different day, different players, different draft, but still pretty risky for G2. You see the first three picks from SKT and you're like, all right, well, I don't even know what could fill out a drop to take it down. It's already Twitch being so powerful, so often blind picked without any sort of respect for Caitlyn's and other powerful bot lanes. G2 will respond most likely, I think they already have, with the Karma. So they do have wound shielding support, but you look at SKT's side and you're like, it's not quite blind pick territory, but it's not far away from it. Doesn't really feel like they were hurt by the bans or pickaways at all. I mean, both teams have actually quite a lot of protection for a hyper carry here. SKT, they've already taken theirs in the Twitch, but I think they took Kennen kind of as a risk assessment saying that they won't take Karma. They get it back here, but what they maybe give up could hurt. Elise actually now going to get banned by G2, so starting to attack more junglers from Pino. Yeah, and that's actually the coolest thing about this draft. As many risks as G2 have been taking, and as much as SK Telecom look like they're getting blind pick, something where they're not getting it is in the jungle position, quite obviously. That's now three jungle bans by G2 alone to push Pino down in this pool. Makes you wonder if it's going to push to, say, the Rengar. That was a kind of a very fluctuating pick for Pino. It was just one of his lowest win rates. He would he dropped four or five games with it during the regular season. And it's also, of course, a slower ramp up level six jungler that su suits Trick style because he's very often a level six jungler himself. And even that gets banned away. So I mean, yep. I think we can see where G2 is going here. I think they want Caitlyn and Nunu as their two picks.
Knights is what I'm most likely expecting. So I would not be surprised to see a Caitlyn ban from SK Telecom right here. But they're discussing which carry they're most fearful of with the double shields and a potential Nunu. Just saw Coma talking to Bang, so I think he's maybe discussing potential matchups there. There's Caitlyn, though, exactly as you kind of expected. And if that was G2's plan, all right, they have to pivot very quickly here in the draft. And here's actually something we didn't track. They didn't get a ban off for Kha'Zix, so scratch the Nunu thing, they're still gonna have a hyper carry, but getting Kha'Zix as a denial pick is much higher value than picking Nunu here. And now you wonder where Peanut will go, because he had a pretty narrow pull throughout the course of LCK Spring. He played maybe six junglers yep. all season, and four with any seriousness, all of them accounted for in this situation. You might start wondering where he'll go. Yeah, we call it a narrow pool, but I mean, that's just the jungle pool. Sure. It was Peanut's pool, and at this point, you're almost beginning to reach outside of that. We saw some, you know, random Zack stuff from certain players, but what's Peanut's pocket pick going to be? He's a fighter, he's a skirmisher. We saw his attempt at an Ivern game, and it left a lot to be desired. It was very desperate from the level of play we've seen on other champions. I can see Olaf here, because they have the Lulu. I was trying to think of when you get pinched or if you have weird jungle pools, what could you pull out? And Peanut had some tremendous Olaf games internationally at Worlds last year, especially when you have the haste of something and like that. And he debuted it at Worlds, if you remember, Jack. We finally saw it very late in that tournament. Never played it this year, never played it before Worlds. So certainly, it's going way back in history with Peanut. And for once, he's not gonna be on a comfort like this in this tournament. Plus, we get Faker on Ari, which makes you pumped, and it is that Ari versus Orianna skill matchup in the middle. And that's the thing, really safe, very respectful from SKT here with something like the Ari. We could also flex the cannon, which is the other thing I was trying to get in before. Oh, man. It could be AD cannon for Sven. I mean, we've seen Europe do it quite a lot. Looks like it is last big Shen for x -Bags. Oh, man. That's something right there. <laughs> Jack, are you all right there? You need, you need a second. I man. don't like it uh, at all right now. And obviously it could work and you can be called a fool later, but you have the Karma Oriana. So generally speaking, you want to set that up for a really good scaling marks, meaning yes, some of them were banned away, but you can still even put Ash with that and have strong laning phases. The Kennen doesn't guarantee win that lane against the Twitch, and now they don't have the scaling with which to throw the shields onto. Now, if it was Gigabyte Marines, you'd go glass, glass half full with Levi's Kha'Zix, but giving Trick the same respect that he can be a secondary carry with all that shielding is certainly not something that really behooves you, given what he's shown in the tournament. Plus, Shen, just as a pick, if you count his win rate in play-ins and the main event here, or in the group stages, sorry, it is 25%, so it is very much on the lower end. He can be pushed in hilariously by Galia. And it is a comfort pick for Expect, so maybe the thought is here, Giving Kennen to expect just doesn't feel like a strategy that you really want to employ. So maybe they take it because they need to deny away from SKT. But Ven's like, all right, I guess I'm playing this now. I mean, a lot of interesting stuff in this drive. Like SKT keeping it simple, which I think is what you expected, Papa Smithy. G2 mixing it up a bit, but maybe too much. Yeah, I mean, what was I expecting? Kennen flex pick for a European <laughs> LCS team. Of course they're going to do it. And they did, in a sense, trick SKT to thinking they're having Galio versus Kennen, but it's not like Galio versus Shen is magically a terrible match for Galio. I know this is a terrible pun for a G2 game, but who tricked who may actually be <laughs> the sub-story of this game, because they have certainly flexed, they have surprised, but where it's left up is ultra comfort for SKT outside if G2 can actually attack Peanut, who is not on comfort on the old Well, we'll have to see what happens when we're out onto the roof for the first time here in the MSI group stage, day number five. Not many games left to play for a lot of these teams. G2 will face SKT one more time. It looked okay for the first 10, 15, and then as very typical for SKT games, it goes downhill quickly. I mean, you say okay, I think it was good. Honestly, it was the first game of the tournament. SKT came in already kind of crowned champions of the midseason invitational, and G2 took it to them until they made a big macro mistake in the mid game, which lost them all their early reward. And the start is already better for SKT in this game. That's true. In the first game of the tournament. <laughs> Faker, as Oriana, was in the brush that Perks ended up putting his Oriana ball in. So no first blood, pre one minute in this one. And in that particular game, G2 did still get demolished in the mid game. And that's one of the most devastating things that can happen to a team have that good start and then take some very bad map plays because then everyone feels bad about the strat. Well, we'll see what happens here. Sven on the cannon this time around. Have to double check if he's played in the EULCS, yes, but of course you look at Reckless in that region, there are a ton of players on that champion. It's fun to think about and start theory crafting. Seeing more Galio and you're like, okay, where does Galio fit in? Who will he be ulting is kind of the big question because that heroic engine is such an iconic uh, ability. 
you have to feel like if SKT can push up top lane, which you can almost plug and play, almost certainly against the Shen, Olaf can go pretty damn aggressive and have Ragnarok and also the heroic engines to back up counter jungle. That's exactly the thing that I think SKT would be banking on is if Pina can get ahead in this early game, as he has many times on the Olaf, his ability to run people down and having the damage reduction from a Galio ultimate as well as that backup makes him even scarier. Top side of the jungle is definitely going to be his friend, so he might actually start contesting. Maybe around second red spawn, when the Galio ultimate is available, he can play pretty Rambo, and it's not quite a twisted fate from the mid lane when it comes to backup, but the heroic entrance is right up there with him. Yeah, just a reminder, Olaf gets a lot more attack speed the lower he is on health, so that's why Peanut went so low on blue buff and is staying low. It's a bit of a mind game as far as arrogance goes with the Olaf, staying low and not thinking you're going to get counter jump. But it is also one of those things where you give over a bit of information about jungle passing when you're Olaf, because it's pretty predictable for an Olaf to start blue, even if it's not necessarily the most obvious path. It's not likely to be the Raptor start with the Olaf. It's likely to be blue. So even though G2 haven't put down deep vision, you can kind of make an educated guess just from the draft of Olaf. Well, just looking at the minimap right now, Trick is going to go ahead and finish off this blue. Looks like he's backing up towards a different camp, so a lot of early jungle farming so far. Uh, other than that, though, sidelines for SKT pushed right up. <laughs> So Peanut's kind of getting covered here if he is kind of farming it out a little more. Perks does have some traction here in mid lane. Trick might be looking for something here. I mean, Cannon's strong laning phase is actually more related to the Hurricane and, of course, laning against melee champions in top than in the bot lane. When we had Cannon as an AD carry many moons ago, he had longer attack range, so his actual laning phase is actually pretty static. He doesn't have AoE, really. He's not going to be diving into the minion wave to clear with an EW. No lightning rushes offensively, so he's actually going to be pushed in by Twitch, which is a very strange scenario. Exactly. Twitch and Lulu can wave clear uh, fairly well. Kennen not matching Twitch, whereas Lulu more likely to match Karma. That's why that lane can be pushing. Not to mention, Bang and Wolf just play more forward in their lane by style than G2 have this turn. I'd argue that if you think of any meta AD carry, even Ezreal, Cannon probably pushes less than Ezreal because it doesn't have the long range auto attack and attack speed. The Mystic shot is the trades are looking pretty good for SKT and Peanut is around bot. Yeah, Ignite for Wolf as well. So this lane could get aggressive very quickly. Looking at Ven holding onto the summoners. Peanut looking for a recall, does cancel it. No one going in just yet. Yeah, notice how Peanut saved his smites for the latter half of his jungle clear, so he was then full health in order to go to the river. He was mainly just sitting there in case Trick was there for a counter gank. A little disappointed that actually he was there because Trick had just been in that brush about 20 seconds prior, and it's very rare for a player to regank a spot in 20 seconds after doing a clear like that, but didn't lose much time and was generally there for safety, so a fairly SKT-style play, taking a very small negative play for preventing a larger Baker takes not the best trade. We have a bit of breathing room in the game as the jungles are kind of recalled. I want to talk a little bit about Twitch, because we talked about Bang being very much favoring the Twitch ever since the final. That was the first time he had taken out this season. One of the reasons why I think SKT is that much better with Twitch than basically any team in the world is even in their losses, which the game there was only one this tournament, and the early games where they've been a bit wayward, SKT always have jungle pressure. It feels like even when they're 5,000 gold behind, they're trying to pressure in, steal away jungle camps. It never feels like SKT are only dealing with the dregs of a single Raptor camp, for example. They're always able to push stuff up. And whenever you have map control, which for SKT feels like 85% of the time, the threat of the ambush, how aggressive you can play and how much you have to respect around a Twitch, not even taking into account the ultimate and the late game team fighting, makes Twitch just that much more of a headache to deal with. And to add a little bit to that as well, Huni and Faker are such threatening soul laners that apply so much pressure. Twitch, when he's at his worst, is getting focused and camped and resources are going to shut him down. But if you do that against SKT, that means you're no longer committing resources to shutting down Huni or Faker, and then they will generally thrive in the solo lanes. Well, having a look right now, Perk's actually doing a nice job getting aggressive in the face of Faker, was consistently pushing him back into that turret. Faker has back now, should have time as he picks up the Lost Chapter to get back to the way, but Perk, it's level six, he's gonna try and shove it out. We'll get it back there as well as expect. Once on a Huni, bit of damage back there, but a nice justice punch into the Winds of War. Just trading back and forth. I don't expect too much to happen here in this 1v1. Yeah, but I do have to credit Expect right here actually having a slight minion advantage over Huni. He did expend his teleport to get it, but he'll get back his global presence at level 6. And in a lane where Shen is completely outpushed, it is good to not be denied CS and now has itemized some magic resist to make it difficult to push him out of it. It sounds like a weird scenario to talk about, but the skill of last hitting now that the nerfs have come through to the Q specifically on Shen when it comes to minions, not talking about the pushing war that we know Galio will win, the last hits are relevant because at the end of the day, 
on the Galio, you're a bit like a victor when you get Hex score. You're kind of eating the wave and you're not always going to get everything. You're going to get the backline minions. You might miss out on some others. So it's very much about trying to push in his Faker. The worry here is whether or not he can roam. Faker's going to ult in and so is Galio. You've returned. No, doesn't get a point blank perk. Doesn't pull the trigger on the ulti, though. Respects the flash from Faker, but lives the ulti. Oh, ulti back. Perk's looking for the kill. Gets a dab with his Galio and Peanut surfing in as well. SKT commit a lot there, but Perks gets out easily. Yeah, Perks did very well in that instance. He didn't get hit by all of Faker's spells in the all-in because that was kind of the strategy is Ari delivered the Galio to the Orianna. That didn't happen, and then to add insult to injury to SKT, Huni had to ult defensively, so that hurts both of their soul lanes. Look at this, G2 actually outlaning both Faker and Huni early on. I mean, whenever you pile in resources and get no gain, that is net gain to the enemy team, when in this case is G2, so big for them is already does profit from the fact that the control world was put down. So they do have that top side control we were talking about. You know, halfing around top, but not realistically looking for a turret dive. But yeah, SKT, they have been largely keeping it simple, but the execution does go wayward on that. Yeah, and unless Huni can poke down expect, that dive is actually really difficult. The auto attack blocking that Shen can do by pressing his W really limits the Olaf's diving potential unless they send three people up there. So actually a very controlled early game, all things considered, for G2. That's why really the strategy for SKT, I think, is to control the enemy topside jungle, like we mentioned, because Galio is going to auto push. It's going to miss minions, like we've already noticed. Very new into the meta, very difficult and haphazard to get the auto attack in when you're largely under turret anyway. So it's really on Olaf to profit from the fact that top lane will be perma pushed into Shen's turret. And we've seen a little bit of that already. Cooney moving up, getting wards deep into that side of the jungle. Peanut did steal away the red as well, so you can kind of see where SKT are putting a lot of their pressure. Other than that, though, CS Lee looking great for perks in the mid lane. Actually, 20 up on Faker right now, and no first blood given just yet. Gold nice and even G2. Happy to play a nice controlled early game and looking strong here. Might even get something. Actually, Trick jumping on a Faker. Faker trying to get out, but Perk's gonna follow through. Play all procs. Bang here as well, though. Faker taking a lot of damage, but G2 so much affected. There's Bangman. Here's the TP down as well. Peanut also getting in with Ben. Trying to start him up. Good two man. Chocolate gets on the bank, but it's not quite enough damage. But flashed up for Hootie. Gets a four man torn. I think it might have been all the there's a little more thing. First blood's down already, and then chasing it on for Trick. Wolf getting low as Ben. Tries to chase him out. Expect. Gets a kill back for Trick. Oh, does go down to Galio. Hootie now caught out. 1v3 versus the rest of G2. Can he get out of this one? He doesn't have his ultimate. He's going to get stunned by Sven. He seems to try and run out, but a good block on the Justice Punch. Damage is massive, though. Galio doing so much in the early stages, but I think it's enough. There's a taunt. Sven gets another kill. How is Galio already a raid boss when it comes to tankiness? The snipe away to get the second kill as well. Who needs uh, Galio yesterday was monstrous against TSM, and the lead he's got already after a bit of a haphazard laning phase is going to really reward SKT. Yeah, timing on the teleport gives him the two kills, but G2 was able to get two over, so we were nearly in a standstill before that, and we're mostly in a standstill after. We're going to watch this one more time, though. The big thing is Bang's sneakiness getting into lane here, because you start the fight by chucking Faker low. I was actually expecting a Shockwave early on to try and catch Faker, but they're respecting his flash. They don't want to blow Shockwave onto nothing, but it's Bang who surprises them, and then Perks without Summer Spells can be run down. I really respect them for actually pulling off, expecting Bang to come in, but who needs Teleport, and then getting basically everyone on the taunt into the Wild group. No one has help far or really resources to follow up on it so it is very much a solo mission so it's actually relevant that Hooney snipes away the second kill otherwise SKT would have traded down in this scenario well bit of early action but teams kind of in a whitewash SKT technically up on goal but 500 isn't too much here Drake the mountain Drake still up and of course Tower's feeling pretty healthy on both sides so everyone just chilling out for now first exchange look very neutral yeah and I I do want to point out Huni's itemization on Galio here. I feel like his his item choices are actually almost always correct on any champion he plays. He's played two Galio games before, and in those games he's built Ninja Tabi, Sunfire Cape, Iceborne Gauntlets, into Thornmail. And those are games where he's dealing with a lot of physical damage threats. Here, even though Kennen will do physical damage, it's a lot more magic damage. And the only real physical damage is from an assassination character who's never going to be hitting him. So he's going Spirit Visage first, and most likely Mercury Treads after that. I really love the choice. Bagoon again, 2v2 starting. Shockwave hits Peanut, but he all threw it. Now Trick caught out of position. Just has to run him down and try to get a sniper. Oh. Baker gets the kill. First 2v2 win, SKT. Yeah, really close skirmish there. Able to back away in the bot lane. Also some trading, but trading up is SKT. This time, Baker does actually hit the skill shot to pick up his first kill of the game. 
the Ariana Shockwave, you really didn't contribute much, just a DPS onto the Olaf because the ult was already popped. Yeah, and there's much more tankiness on the side of SKT, not to mention in skirmishes like that, the Ignite can actually turn the tides when the levels are very close. So notice how Faker jumps in, doesn't even get both parts of his Q and misses his charm, so that's why G2 feel pretty confident, but they didn't quite focus right, and now Perks is without Summer's Throw it again, Perks trying to get back to his top, but he's got no chance. Faker nails that top and gets the kill. Yeah, first charm he hits, but of course got the previous kill, and now that really tilting strategy of having to walk to lane, the walk of shame, the second time after you die, after a repeated gank, and Faker pushes up, Trick's taking a bit of free damage. Another charm. Might look to dive, no, not yet. Just damage on the turret, great snap on the more. One more, Peter, glides it up, takes down Trick. The least in mechanics coming into the four on the cube, and Trick didn't need to walk up. We've seen too many junglers this tournament get disrespectful walking up to line skill shots, and Trick plays the ultimate prize. Situation where you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. He backs away, they give away first turret to Faker, but because he could not dodge the cues from Peanut or the charm from Faker, he falls. So gets outplayed right there, and that's an 0-3-0 has it. And now you have to adjust your emotions because G2 were playing very well through their mid lane, but two deaths and the turret going down when they were behind the gold is not lane. 2v2 gonna be a 3v2 right now. He's expect with a standard and look at the warp and a great oh. knock up there. He's gonna deny that now. Bang turns around but gets exhausted and stunned. Damn. Wolf talks about it's hard for supports to make highlight plays. That's about as highlight as you get on Lulu. Interrupting expect mid top. Oh no. This just feels so bad for the mid laner. Peanut's gonna run Perks down with the ultimate ticking away. Actually ulti there by Perk, but it's just yeah. not enough. Perk, oh. no tower to get to. Oh. Here comes Galio. Peanut, low on mana, might actually save him, but Huni is gonna chase it. He's got flash. Perk's gonna have to go towards absolutely no one. Teammate's not there, but might just run away far enough as the blast cone should get him out. But Trick walks into a galley oh, the charm now as well. That's a mistake. Just as much for the knockup. Gets out, but Faker's got more than enough dashes for that one. Trick's not really acceptable to die in that manner. Back to back, you have to say, largely. Perks did so much work. Sidestepping skill shots will get out. But as Jungler just sweetens the engage for SKT. Yeah, about to give Perks credit for dodging those axes at close range, which he deserves, but then Trick just throws it all away. Uh, by trying to walk straight into a Galio when his mid laner was nowhere to support. Yeah, zero 4 and zero stat line for 13 minutes. I mean, these players have very different stat lines. They've been playing different styles of champions, so the DPM stats that, for example, are floating around are misleading, but Peanut has been on the top, and it's another one of these wayward early games for Trick. Yeah, unfortunately for Trick, he falls towards the bottom of almost every statistical jungle category in this tournament. Low kills, low damage, low KDA as well. But watching this one, why? Why does he walk up? He's trying to get a good trade, but it, he's just not necessarily paying attention to the map. They try to go on Bang once again. Bottom again, 2v2 starting. Bang low. He has ventured to do the damage. He already got Polymorph. They're going to try to back around that damage. Disgusting as there's one for SKT. Mithy might make it a second as Wolf is looking for the slow. Clutch Kittleland gets it. Now going to lay the auto. Doing this trick down here to try and turn it around. Mithy grabs the fight with his perk down as well. Flash out from Bang is TP'd up from SKT. Peanut forces perk flash on the other side is G2, back towards their outer tower. Peanut, he's going for a dive here. G2 getting real far back. Now it feels like the, every lane on the map is collapsing for G2. The mid lane was what was the bastion of hope. The two ganks and then the turret going down really removed that. Now Oriana will be roamed on very comfortably by Faker. You know, so little expect can do in the bot lane, and even yeah. in the top lane, sorry, and bot lane is already also feeling the brunt of the pain. And these are the disaster early games you hope to avoid. Expect was holding up in the top lane for quite a while, but Huni has made such a large impact on the rest of the map. Since then, you're seeing some of the advantage, and also outplaced by pretty much everyone else on the SKT lineup. And that's kind of been the thing for SKT this tournament, has been the casual sidesteps on skill shots that we don't necessarily see with any regularity from other teams. The interrupt from um, the wild growth also. So we're going to see a replay. This was once again G2 opting. They wanted to have a pressure point. They wanted to be winning in at least a single lane, but Bang turns around. We know what Lulu can do, and a crit comes through from just the Brawler's glove, and that cements the first kill. Yeah, even though G2 were the ones to engage that, they weren't even close to being able to win that fight. So that was definitely one of those situations where they really felt the need to make a play, and I think we're hoping they could catch Bang without Wolf there. But Wolf was in Fog of War, I believe, and surprised them. And now it feels like we kind of have to take a step back. So we have to remember that, okay, G2 probably penciled in this game as a loss. SKT came in heavy favorites. 
to me, the real question is, can G2 stabilize the rest of the game? Even in a loss, they cannot have a scenario where Trick dies another five times in the next 10 minutes. They cannot have a scenario where lanes are just trying to make individual plays and lose sight because they have a must-win game coming later in the day. And it's stabilization, even if the result won't stabilize, is as necessary for G2, given the context of the tournament. Well, not looking great so far. 7,000 gold up for SKT and four turrets to nothing. I think Perks has to feel so frustrated because Ari, despite being behind, has made so many other plays. I mean, Faker's Ari is pretty good when you have Pina as your jungle backing you up and Huni as your Galio coming down from top lane. Stuff like this happens where Huni and Expect are trading and Expect, he's not winning. He's got no pressure. There's nothing he can do to push up. And of course, the lanes have kind of disintegrated already. So Bang is there looking for a kill anyway. There's no good decisions left, really, for anyone on the side of G2. It's just what SKT leave up to them while they make plays around the map. Yeah, and is this what SKT looks like when they're actually angry? Because they did drop that one game, and this is now a 7,000 gold lead of 17 minutes. One of the biggest in the entire tournament. Peanut, in particular, continues to just add to his stat line. As far as stats within the first 15 minutes of the game, Peanut has only died a single time this tournament and now has 28 kills in those, or sorry, 25 kills in that moment. So just incredible stats. And we can even widen that stat line, Jack. He has 48 kills now in the tournament, most of any player in the group stage, and he has 10 deaths, only 10 deaths, and now coming up to nine games. He has the least deaths and the most kills. It's just insanity from the jungle, a role where often you might be second or third most deaths on the team. The SKT is stealing away the red buff. I did notice the Mountain Drake is still up, and that's just how much SKT have been playing in these skirmishes. No one's going towards the Drake. SKT, eh, we're taking the towels without them. We don't need it. Yeah, and another thing that's a little surprising to many about SKT in this tournament is how low their ward numbers are as Faker gets jumped on clearing a ward. It's okay, thank you, just use the ult to get so. Yeah, it's how low their ward numbers are, but I do want to point out their trinket choices. In almost every single game, Faker is going sweeper. Almost no other mid laners are going sweeper, and as a result of that, his wards are extremely low. But also, he's not buying that many control wards. You can see he's sitting on his refillable potion this late in the game. You can argue that SKT is so pushed up on, up on the map so often and recalling so infrequently that they're just buying fewer control wards, but also they're almost always with triple sweeper because the name of the game is denying vision rather than acquiring it because they're human wards later in the game. I mean, what was our storyline for Pina in 2016 on the Rock side? It's the battle ward. He was yep. Warding by being in the face of the enemy jungle. Well, they got about five battle wards, it feels like, right now for SKT. So they could at least been afforded to be a lot more conservative with their ward usage, which means all that gold lead already around 8,000 is put into damage. And that's why it's time for skirmishes at any point. Well, G2 hoping for something optimistic, perhaps, in the top lane. Three people just sitting in that middle brush in the top lane, but Woof getting some wards done. I think hitting the plan, making sure they have enough vision. And G2 might be here for a long time, hoping a customer comes through, but can hit the recall button and not get anything out of the play. SKT doesn't need to go there. You know, they don't need to go there. They have some information about what brushes were uh, crossed. So they may have an idea what side of the map the enemy is on, and that's why you can see Faker already popping the sweeper, already yep. shooting his Q through brush, because why give over anything? That's what they were probably criticized for so much yesterday, was what they gave away, and today was about tightening the fundamentals going into the bracket stage. Yeah, they also had the buddy system right there. Wolf was hanging just for, for, far enough back, and that's kind of what he was doing in the bottom lane with Bang there that allowed him to turn the 2v2. Well, here we go, though. Play starting stage and on this member. Faker looking for the 1v1. Going to be a 2v1. No, 3v2. SKT, of course, there first. As Mizzy's going to join and try and save the teammates back. The Trish Shockwave barely gets warm, and Sven just gets annihilated by Peanut, the Wild Ghost, keeping him alive through everything else in G2. Every Bang's waiting. Going wrong, and here's Bang. Monster flank here from the Twitch. Expect does get the taunt down as Perks does take out Wolf on the other end, but Banks firing away. Looking for Mizzy, but here comes Trick Bank. I think a little too far forward. Does go down the Trick. Now Bank is dead as well. G2 finding some heals. SK2, his aggression will cost some Pina. Turns a fight, but he's dead also. Homo will definitely leave this game with at least one replay he wants to draw his charges' attention to. Very sloppy play, given that Galio clearly was not going to be grouping him. G2's actually going to start Baron. Yeah, it's do or die for them. It's 20 minutes. They want to do Baron. They just killed four people. They're still down 7,000 gold, and there is a very big Galio about oh. to disrupt this. That is not the teleport I expected, but Sven's actually bottom lane can't join. The 4v1 right really now. G2 really want to try and get it in any way possible, Goody. but Huni is going to disrupt. We're going to take down perks. G2 have to pull off Baron. Huni with a great TP, despite not joining the fight, does get G2 off Baron. Still a big mistake there by SKT, over-pushing 
They've had so much success taking odd numbered fights when they're this far ahead. Let's watch this one more time. Ven is able to survive the initial onslaught, and that's key. And yeah, they open up against the Shen Ultimate, but they had two people coming in and also the Twitch ready for stealth. Do so you understand the start? Sven is delayed, and you're like, okay, SKT have a big gold lead. This is fine. Bang sets up for an engage, but actually gets very low value. So it comes out of stealth, starts the ultimate, expects taunt hadn't been used. It's used effectively, and look at how many auto attacks Bang loses out on. He actually puts out relatively little damage in this fight. Yeah, exactly. Bang was hoping for the amazing flank behind them, but G2 actually pushed up beyond that point. If Bang opens up in a different position in this fight, I feel like SKT actually wins it if he opens up on Perks' Oriana, but he chose an area very close to Shen, didn't expect expect to still have Taunt, and he pays the price. And it's one of those also little situations where to be a fly on the wall on why Huni never teleported, because I, you'd have to imagine he got a call from his team to just take the turret, don't worry about it, we'll get out or we'll trade up. Either way, a call somewhere on the long the line seemed to be wrong, even though he did get the bot lane objective. Things out of the can, Ulti gonna be a plucked on Sven Perksy to try to protect him. Too much damage, burns there for the poison. Bang, yet another one. Well, Snowball looks like when you have the extra Twitch. items. Running in again, SKT looking for a tower dive, actually. Perks, no flash, does shock on the Faker. Time gonna miss, but Peanut's gonna run for it. Ragnarok will not be stopped, there's a shutdown. You're afforded to make mistakes like SK Telecom did three minutes ago when you have an early game like SK Telecom did in this game. They can get away with mistakes. Will they be able to do in the bracket stage? That part is up for debate. But given this early game, they're still gonna be comfortably in the league. Almost 10,000 gold. Absolutely insane here for SKT. And that Bang's Twitch again getting aggressive. Sure, it cost him in the last exchange, but SKT's control just serving him so well. And he's a 23 minute Baron. And I love the vision toggle because, again, you see the pressure that's on because they also have to deal with the fact that Twitch has stealth. So there's so many things to respect, and they have so little map control. And Trick just had to jump away over a further wall while they still don't have vision of this Baron. He's back in, though. Would actually have a chance to steal with that vision. Caught not quite there. Trick needs to get back in, but this might already down. And now Trick's just caught out of position, Faker. Almost with the ulti ready to chase SKT. How far do they want to go? Faker, instant shot, takes down Trick. And they get a pick for their trouble after the Baron is banged. Still chasing, wants revenge on Mithy perhaps after the last exchange. No Shen around this time. Mithy running back towards his teammates. And they're gonna take this quick trip back to the base and maybe try and prep themselves for a final push. 1-3-1, one, one, they have the Galio that can join the other lane if they decide to dive. This size of gold lead at 24 minutes, you actually don't often see. So SKT gonna try and push this And back. you can't even say words like the outscale word or anything for the side of G2. It is Ken and AD carry. We did scrutinize the comp when they went for the Shen last pick, saying, well, in the mid game, it could be oppressive if somehow Shen is massively ahead, if Kennen's massively ahead. But that was literally the only real win condition, barring catastrophic mistakes that you just aren't really assigned to SKT. Exactly. And the Bot lane Kennen is still about to split push. It's just a different way of trying to get there instead of throwing them in the top lane. And when you fall that far behind in the early and mid game, you just never have the opportunity to set up the split push and never get an advantage in any of the side lanes. And in general, just the amount of time SKT are out on this map, these are long shifts for these boys. But just putting in overtime and Banks stealthing forward again. He's like got actually no team behind him and he's still confident going in, maybe looking for a pick. Actually opens up on a perks. Baker on the other side, hoping they take the bait. Not this time. It was really fun watching Bang's movements because it felt like any two was golden. He was when they saw the third person roll in. He was like, okay, maybe I'm going to step back. But this is the same twitch we saw in the grand final, walking up to a Malzahar in a mid lane and being like, well, I'm going to be fine. I got QSS. I'm going to get a double kill. And when you're that far ahead on Twitch, it's why teams have been banning away the Twitch because map control plus. Something like this, a hyper carry that can come from stealth is just the biggest headache ever for G2. Well, pressure continues. Peanut just slaying people. Stands United. It's not quite going to be enough. Peanut barely into a fake. just nails Bang with a Q. His Galleon now going to knock up Expect and peel for the rest of the team. SKT might turn it back around, knock up onto Expect. He flashes out. G2 still defending, but SKT playing with styles and so much aggression. Yeah, I mean, Peanut just beast mode right in there on this van. It feels unfair when Peanuts this far ahead just running at your carries. I mean, what can you do? They have a Shen ulti and it's still not even close to enough with Faker there. And it's on the Olaf. They targeted him so hard and yet he still found comfort on a pick he hadn't played all year. SKT want to finally break the base. And it's broken. Bottom in. Give it a turret down. Bottom in here. Will follow shortly. G2 running back towards their fountain hoping something happens. 
but SKT is still complete control. We'll maybe end the game before the next Baron spawns. Yeah, and I mean, face your time, you asked what can G2 do, and I'll say play for late game, but that's the next game. TSM is the late game at this point because they know that they're way in, they, there's still ways into the back stage with the victory over TSM. Ooh, so. Flash my team, Elijah no, back oh. flashes forward! I think it's gonna cost him his life, bang! Silly trickle taken down. I saw your finger wave there, pastry time. We were right there with you. Unnecessary mistake, but again, not going to be consequential. You'd have to imagine the context of the fight. Peanuts two levels up on the enemy AD carry. Who's up, levels up on the mid laner as well for the majority of this game. Clean up the kill. Peanut gets out. I am surprised that expect that. Sven waited so long to flash. Peanut was going to have to take time to clear onto him. The taunt would still technically be able to reach the Olaf. <laughs> Speaking of Olaf, uh, this is the replay, right? Peanut at it again. He actually won v3, running away. Good shockwave there after the Ragnarok wears up. Peanut goes down. All right, it's starting to get a little bit sloppy. Yeah, they're just having fun, it feels like, at this point. SKT It's reminding us of SKT versus the Gigabyte Marines. First round match where they opted into a death match because they could. You can say, though, that G2 picking up these kills is going to be raising spirits. Just picking up a kill when you're on this stage, when you know that your biggest task is ahead, it is that match against TSM. Picking up kills on the names that you know and love is big for the G2 members because they need any semblance of confidence. And remember, they are 0-3 if you include the two games in from yesterday in a row. Absolutely. And they really need to pick up. It's a must-win game later, so any sort of steadying influences from inside the game are welcomed given that, again, we still aren't really crediting them with a chance to come back 12,000 yes. gold behind. It definitely depends on the team, the way they can recover from victory and the ways they would preferably lose, right? Because we, we actually had a pretty big discussion about this. Ow. Hell, man. In the capture pit, and I think there were very varying opinions about, well, you'd actually rather win fast. You really don't want to be winning and then lose because then you're going to be more tilted after the loss. But so much of it will depend on the individual. If Pokes it off there, that would have been sick, but he died instead to fake up. Just dashes forward. I was smelling a play there for Perks, but not a mind reader, and bang, just playing so far up with this round. Yeah, they're not playing three lanes, of course. The Super Minions are pushing in, but they want to break the base in the second spot. SKT just want to finally put the icing on the cake, which is the victory in this game. Exactly. We also have to note a win walks SKT as the number yep. one seed. Surprise, Peanuts in again. Here's the Galio ultimate to follow through, but that is diving too close. Oh, baby. Well, three men there, and the ultimate for Zed. I don't think he's gonna cut it. Hooney's still chasing him down. There's a couple dead already. Two four for G2 is expect. Is it gonna be the next target? Hooney tries oh. to switch to the fountain, gets the top back down as well. Faker oh. still guiding forward, just skirting around the fountain legs. That expect flashes back into his own fountain just to not die. I don't think you ever heard those words play by play at pastry time, but that's what had to happen. They're waiting for the minion wave. They're looking to finish the game. SKT are in rare form. Game looking to go down before the next Baron's bomb. Got about a minute to do a Faker. Fine, Perks to lead him off the map. It's the right next to Gonna fall Faker. Looks for a second time. Doesn't get it onto Mindy, but Peanut and Wolf are doing the business they need to do. Hooney zoning them away. The Nexus explodes and SKT dominate G2 to lock in first. In under 30 minutes with just the one Baron spawn. They did even look a little bit sloppy in that victory towards the end, but that's just the expectations SKT has set for themselves and the fans. Now, eight and one in the MSI group stage. Every other team in the world wishes they could be scrutinized as closely as SK Telecom T1 is. Every team wishes that even in a game that they did not look like losing after about the first eight to 10 minutes, people will criticize them for over-engaging, for having a bit of fun, for diving in for KDA. But that is SK Telecom T1, a team that has won every international tournament they have competed in ever since Worlds 2015. And they now locked in as the first team. And whichever team finishes fourth, and there could certainly be a lot of headaches to work out who that is, are going to be very scared about the proposition of a best of five against SKTT1. And like you said, we just have to look at the little things. I mean, to be fair to SKT, it's not just us that have to scrutinize this team so heavily because they are otherwise so good. You know Kome is going to be in there, especially on that engage towards the top side, saying, what were you guys thinking? But apart from that, they're the best team in the world for a reason. They can afford to make some pretty horrendous mistakes at time, and it just feels like it doesn't matter. Absolutely. This is actually the first game Moody has played Galio and not been the most damage on his team. <laughs> so he's been so dominant on that champion. Still another super strong game from him. We're still finding little things to be hyped about, little things to criticize, because the big things, 
the big picture's looking damn good for SKT. Yeah, there's remaining the gold standard of how you play League of Legends. Teams look to them to try and learn, and that's, funnily enough, one of the reasons it's so hard to beat them, because you're not going to do SKT better than SKT. Well, we'll see what happens there, but for more on SKT's win to secure the number one seed, we're going to take back in with Tash and the analysts. Thank you very much, Pastry Time, Papa Smithy. That's exactly right. The picture is looking good. The big picture looks good for SKT as they lock in that first seed, moving towards the knockout stage. For G2, though, in a game that actually, in those opening minutes, looked to be going very well, especially if we put a spotlight on that mid lane, all of it fell apart within that 10 to 15 minute mark. And we saw the classic SKT kind of just strangle hold onto the game and run away with it. Yeah, 100%. The first seven minutes, oh, I'll say eight minutes, eight and a half minutes looked great for G2. You know, you look at the composition, you maybe start theorizing late game, maybe it goes a little bit wonky because of the Twitch, but this is kind of where things started to go sideways. Oh, yeah, excuse me. No, this still looks good. <laughs> it started out well with Bruce getting initial uh, CS lead over Faker. Then he forced Faker on a base. And then Faker answered with an immediate ulti. Perks replied. He gets like a jungle attention. He gets Galio ulti here. So it looked like Perks was definitely in this element. And even later in the game, he started playing well. But honestly, this was the crucial phase of the game where it turned around. Yeah, I mean, for G2, it just felt like to me, like their first fight around mid lane when Perks was already way ahead was just not necessary. The SKT bot lane had the shove, was going to respond first. And you know, they didn't need to go uh, for as much of a commitment as they as they did. Yeah, and then it just collapses all on mid lane because it makes sense. SKT want to hit them there because they don't have the TP anymore. It was uh, Huni who teleported into that fight into the river, so they don't want to compete with the Shin teleport down bottom, and so they just throw over and over Peanut and Faker time and time again into that mid. And then we have to talk about uh, what our expectations were coming into the day. G2 was on the books they were going to lose anyways. It's only the manner in which they lost that was important to see maybe how it spells out what's going to happen in the rest of the day. So for me, I'm actually not too fussed with this result because Perks was playing out of his mind. He's going up against Bjergsen later. If you play against TSM, the one man you have to keep down at all times is Bjergsen. And there will be less pressure, hopefully, uh, for Europe, that is, onto the jungle uh, because Twick, you know, playing versus Fenskern or Twick playing versus Peanut Faker is still a little bit different. It's Of course, it's, it's massively different, but Super. you do have to be a little bit concerned that it was a 6v4 because Trick was playing for the other team this time. I mean, he, he like, single-handedly lost Disco this game, Kha'Zix. it felt like. And, and I was super disappointed in his play, like consistently choosing a fight that he didn't need to. You know, not only just choosing poor fights, but then mechanical misplays within the fights consistently. And it, and it was really kind of frustrating for me to watch because Perks is playing so damn well, and you want to see him rewarded for that. But it felt like every time Perks does something amazing and, you know, they get a little edge from that, Trick is going to do something even worse that just gives that away. Yeah, even the bot lane was taking some poor trades on the all-in. It felt like after the initial fight where G2, they had a minor lead. They said, you know what, we'll put all the chips in the pot. Let's go all-in. They lost out and they were pretty, for me, tilted afterwards. Yes and no, though, right? Because we did show that replay where they go for the fight in the river, but we don't see all the summoner spells blown. For example, Sven, right, coming in with the Kennen ultimate, decides to hold his flash till after his ultimate is down, as opposed to just capitalizing yeah. on top of the Twitch, zeroing someone out as well. Perks with that chase of Ari down that river didn't blow his ultimate for the kill and you see some of those mechanical decisions bite them then once the Galio comes flying in. I don't know necessarily yeah 100% like there were some mechanical missteps there but when I watch you too I don't hone in on like mechanical mistakes it's kind of like miscommunication like sometimes they're just not all on the same page about what they want to do. That has been their their flaw in Europe uh, they're really good against opponents that they've analyzed. Like if you scream the team all the time, they know how to react, they know all the basic situations, uh, and they know how to play the playbook that they've written. The problem is when things rapidly change or teams play just that little bit better, T2 do not adapt well on the fly, and it's very apparent in barren situations usually. And, and to me, that that's a problem if you can't uh, yeah, actually no, just to analyze. To me, that's a problem like, as well. You know, it's like, great, okay, you can you can beat teams if you scream them all the time, yeah. all year long. Why can you not learn that from, from VOD review, from watching these games, from analyzing all these games that you're seeing against these teams? And, you know, if you're saying you don't have enough information on SKT, then, then there's, there's something going on. Yeah, there's plenty of games of evidence about how they play. But more to your point, Krepo, about G2 looking towards TSM, I want to take a look at one more replay. This is actually a one fight for G2 in the top lane, four for one. Yeah, and this is just, uh, for me, at least while they're down, we still get a display of skill for Perks and is what the Europeans like to call cocky movement. You know, he goes into the fight. Spurks has a habit of juking forward. He's consistently been dodging axes. Later on, I think he'll dodge a charm in this fight. And he's been a large presence 
even while G2 was down in these team fights, and that bodes well for the match later on. He did have to say the banger. <laughs> He's, he's on a little uh, road trip here. I don't know what he's doing. Surprise. Going in the back line, 1v3, doesn't use either summoners before dying. <laughs> right here, right here. Oh, yeah. So, like, Sai says both, gets a kill, he chases Faker down. Let's forget the little mishap that Bang had. Sometimes it's a little help. <laughs> I love that we're both looking at different parts of this replay. Azale's like, what is happening in the back half? You're just like, Perks, no, yes. Yeah. Right, but I mean, yeah. Perks was great. But I think that's where, again, as we as we say, coming into the day, the assumption was G2 drops the game here. The, yes. All eyes are on that TSM versus G2 matchup. And, and again, to your point, all right, you push Peanut on to his fourth, fifth, sixth champion. The guy still goes crazy and massacres your team. You're probably not going to have the same performance out of Sven Skarin. We'll see. We've seen some pretty highlight plays out of him in the past. But at this uh, tournament specifically, hot and cold as has been mentioned before we do have to step away for a quick break but when we return tsm and the flash will take to the stage for game two